Guys, look, no laughing and joking tonight. It has been brought to my attention that some people listen to the podcast do not take us seriously. I just wanted to make it clear, let people know straight off the top that me and Stu are both overqualified to do this show. We have SATs, acquired from that Mexico City College, GC Guesses, that's what I did for most of the multiple choice questions, A-levels, I suppose it's really hard for that blood test, but still got to know, sadly, CCJs, ACDCs, and IOUs, so deserve to be treated with respect as beer scholars, and more importantly, as men, men of distinction, men of class. So let's go on with the show. Stu, if you could quickly go over this beer thing for me again, and, and we can get started. So this is a drink, right? Do, do, I, do I sip this or... Screw it. I'll just wing it. I'll just wing it. Welcome to the Lager Logs. <laughs> Points of view with Tom and Stu. I'm Tom. He's Stu. Say hello, Stu. Hello. Speaking of IOUs, Tom. Okay. Oh, do I owe you money? Not Maybe. again. Leave we'll my talk about off here. this time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to pay your dues. <laughs> I, I might pay my Muslims, too. Fuck, I get- I can you go for that. Right, hello, anyway. hello. hello. And welcome to our beer podcast <laughs> where we talk about beer and nothing else controversial. Didn't get the memo on that one. Yes, hello, hello. First time listeners, fans, and people who just showed up to party, I'll break it down for you. Tonight we have another breathtaking beer review, carefully curated for your listening pleasure. And then just after that, we have something very special for you. We have managed to source a rare field recording of two troglodytes attempting to interact with a living, breathing 21st century modern man. Uh, It's in all honesty compelling stuff, as in you may be compelled to stop listening to the show. Chew, not you again. Seriously. How are you, my man? You know me, Tom. Come on, what's going Forever on? Forever thirsty. Forever parched. <laughs> yes. I am needing quenched, my good man. <laughs> we, we, when will we start quenching? Guys, this man is in need of a drink desperately, as per usual. Uh, we will get to that very soon, Stu, because uh, as coming up in all seriousness is a fantastic interview with Dave McGowan, head honcho at Bosom Buddies of the Show, Broughton Brewery. And we're going to be taking on their Mighty Jock series once again. We just can't get enough. Hope it'll be third time lucky as we give their stout jock a whirl. I suppose good things, much like branches, really do come in trees. At least I think that's how the saying goes. Uh, So Stu's thirsty. Let's drink beer. First beer. As I just previously mentioned, if you weren't listening, is stout jock. Man. The excitement levels are high. I cannot wait to crack this bad boy open. Shoot, we're both big fans of Broughton, and we liked them even before we made their block list on Instagram, right? Yeah. <laughs> years ago, years ago. So uh, Back in season one. Back in season one is when we covered the mighty old jock, and then we covered a uh, little wee jock, uh, season two, I think. So people, check yeah. them out. They are in the archives, available to listen to now. Well, not, you know, not while this podcast is going. Listen to this first, and then go and check out the older episodes. What are we getting on the... Uh, there's there's on a, the sniff, a, buddy. a lot coming off of the... You could smell the volume. That's gorgeous. That's like dark chocolate, that is. I'm getting 7.5. Oh, man. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's kind of got a dark chocolate. Bourneville, baby. Um, if it you... burns your nose hairs, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> they, they need doing, to be honest. They get a bit, getting a bit long and straggly. Uh, are you ready to drink this beer? Yeah, so let's get it poured. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it, man. Pull that bad boy out. Let's have a look at the... Oh. <laughs> Oh, look at that, man. That is dark, buddy. That is a beautiful looking beer. Okay, so, not not the best pour I've seen from you. Oh, should you expect anything you less? Try... <laughs> it's only it's only a third of the glass this time. <laughs> this is That's time for you to like, 
run through all the, the bullshit you see and then it's time for my drink <laughs> oh, to set is that up. what it is? It's completely <laughs> on purpose, all this shit porn is. Okay, I believe you, I believe you. Most people wouldn't, but but I do, Stu. Um, <laughs> let's drink some beer. Cheers, buddy. Cheers. I'm going in. Mm. Delicious. Delicious. Wow. Really smooth. But you don't feel the, the, the volume like the there's no heat coming off of it. No, no, surprisingly quite smooth, very dark. Mm-hmm. Very kind of um a strong roasted flavour to it. Uh, yeah. very like black licorice kind of mm-hmm. vibe to it. Ooh, yeah. just just really, really good. So I was thinking maybe coffee, but I think you've nailed it with the licorice. Yeah, it's, it's not as coffee-y, if that's a word, as some stouts. It's more, yeah, kind of like licorice which is really good. Maybe like figgy licorice kind of yeah. along that, in that kind of area. Wow. Okay, so while you enjoy this, Stu, you look your bastard, I've got to do some reading now. So, yeah, you do that. I'll do this. This is Stout Jock sitting at a fantastic 7.5% uh, from Broughton Brewery, which was born in 1979 and founded by James Collins and David Younger, established in the Scottish borders in the wee village of Broughton. I bet that place stinks. You people need to use the toilet, for God's sake. Uh, it was famously the first what? initiated in Scottish... <laughs> you get that when you can you, know, you listen back to the edit it was the first initiated scottish microbrewery so they were quite quick on the draw when it came to diving into the craft beer game and currently their hopper range caters to that market while on the other hand their old jock variety offers up a more traditional line of beers hoppo has a focus on ipas with their session proper and 6.2 percent offerings then we get old jock their famous scotch ale we jock their 80 shilling export ale both, uh, like we said, um, we've covered on the show, so check that out, alongside tonight's beer. Uh, Merlin was their OG label, and you can st- st- ooh, uh, you still enjoy their Scottish pale ale in that range. Um, I think since we last discussed the Broughty Boys on Season 2, they've introduced two 0% ABV brews to the lineup, Hoppo Malt Zero and Pure Jock Alcohol-Free Beer, which is awesome for those of you that... Do not like alcohol or cannot drink alcohol. Support support the boys uh, that way. Uh, right, we're going to carry on the Broughton loving, but, you know, I hate to break it to you guys. We're not exclusive. This is an open relationship, and I've been seeing Mr. Black and Mr. Foamy from over the road as well. It's last beer's watch. While I leave the listeners in suspense, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> shall we uh, go over how we got nicely hooked up with some brews from the lovely people over there at Broughton? The some we hadn't we hadn't tried before, so shall we dive mm-hmm. into dive into them? Shall we? Yeah, um, what's definitely. first on the agenda, Stu? Let's see. Let's go for a uh, hopper. Was like new to me. I like, mm. think by that point when we were doing an interview with Dave, yeah. that was sort of my first time getting to try the, the Hoppo beer. So a Hoppo Craft Lager, their yellow mm. labelled beer. Yep. Uh, was an interesting one. I remember when we uh, when I drank it during our interview, I thought it was like it was a bee's knees. It was definitely a great tasty uh, beverage. Yep. And then trying it again just last weekend. Whilst it doesn't slap quite as it used to, I am still yeah. thinking that I'm sorry with my hit with the kids terms. <laughs> like I know the drink was an absolute banger. Oh uh, yeah, the kids are using the bee's knees just all over the land. Yeah, aye. Like, <laughs> I don't have a clever comeback. I can't yeah, you, reel it back in. You were you're saying that the the craft lager is pretty darn okay, right? Yes, aye. that's how I feel too. Um, yeah. It was strange because I remember the first time I had it, it was maybe the second drink I had mm. and I really enjoyed it. And when I had it last weekend, it was it was like the first one I had and I thought, something a Disney click. But I think mm. that's more my relationship with Craft Lager. I've had Shehalians, uh, Hoppo and 
uh, Stuart Bruin, and I've always kind of thought, mm, it doesn't click what mm. with Kraft Lager, but I think Kraft Lager seems to be a great second drink. When yeah. uh, I was doing my tasting at, at Belfield, Kraft Lager was yeah. the second one they brought out, and it was nice and refreshing. When yeah. I had it during our interview last time, it was my second beer, so I think don't start with a Kraft Lager. That's yeah, I think craft lager for me is just a marketing term, really, rather than like an actual category for beer. Most of them tend to uh, taste like international pale lagers mm-hmm. or kind of very hoppy yeah, lagers. I remember it tasting quite floral. Yeah, it kind of sits in one of those two categories for me. Mm-hmm. But I think it, it, it's probably the one that's disappeared the most from my memory. Yeah. But I remember thinking it was slightly pilsnery, which was right. nice. Maybe not a word, but an apt description nonetheless. Um, You're good at making those up. Thank you. Uh, and yeah, it was <laughs> do that for at least 95% of the show's duration. Um, yeah, it was pretty good. I thought, like you, man, mm. I think it was okay. I didn't, I didn't, it didn't quite click for me in terms of I really like this beer, but it was a very drinkable lager yeah. um, for sure. And as far as kind of craft lagers go. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was it was pretty good, pretty yeah. good for me. Um, we also got to try. Speaking of Hoppo, their session IPA. Mm-hmm. What do you think of this one? I quite enjoyed it. That was my second time trying it. I thought out of the the session beers, which again, another marketing term, really just for like a low alcohol. Yeah. Uh, because this was a three point eight. I think 3. so. Mate. 4. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it still kind of maintained its flavour when drinking. Like I was just expecting kind of like a watered down pale ale. Yeah. But it still kicked. It still had a lot of flavour to it. And it was just the perfect beer um, for when doing ironing on a Saturday night. <laughs> That's what it was designed The rock for. and roll lifestyle. <laughs> that, that's what it was designed for, yeah. I think it was... Um... I agree with pretty much everything you said, dude. I think it, I think it was the most citrusy out of the range for me. Okay, yeah. The one that was probably the most stereotypical IPA of the bunch, but really rock solid. It, it had its own kind of vibe to it, its own character to it, but yeah. probably, probably one of the best, you know, IPAs I've tried for sure in terms of like your kind of bog standard IPAs, you know. Mm-hmm. Um I thought it was it was really good. I think I still prefer the uh, proper IPA. That oh, was the one the, I had the orange label. Yeah, and I was trying to remember. You haven't tried the Hopper, but you sent it to me, right? I'm I'm, I'm getting confused of where I acquired this can <laughs> from, but this was like last year. Yeah, I think <laughs> it was one of the the Scottish beer festivals at Liddles or Aldi, yeah, yeah, and it sense. did have a, a Hopper in there. Yeah, I like that one a bit more because that's like a really solid West Coast IPA, which which I'm partial to. Um, but this one was pretty pretty good as well. Pretty good as well. And then what else did we drink, Stu? Uh, the the Merlin. Yeah. Now how do you, was it? I should have the bottle in front of me, but I think it was the Merlin Scottish Pale Ale. Ding ding ding! We have a winner. Yeah, yeah man. Um, they had described it as golden. Mm, crisp and one other good punchy buzzword but I've forgotten are you working for Bourne now <laughs> I, I get, as I, you're saying that the, the banner slowly comes down in the around, background yeah. <laughs> is, that, is that your badge that you wear at work hi welcome to Broughton I'm, I'm Stu tell me about your interest in uh, craft beer <laughs> Uh, what did you think of this one? I was a little bit overwhelmed by the label. It was, it was a nice dark blue label with lots of writing, lots of buzzwords. Not buzzwords. Like key descriptive factors mm. of the actual beer. And I thought, ah, I might leave you to last because I don't know a lot about you. But I was like, Scottish pale ale. Yeah. And you know, it's like, ah, oh, well, it can't be that bad. And yeah, again, your dad's ironing Sunday night. School clothes need to be ready. Shirts, polos, the trousers, the lots. Man, and of it's... course, I can't do this task alone. I need my backup. And Dude. the Maryland Pale Ale 
tick the box, uh, like gold and like the color, the the beer itself. Yeah, it's like like orangey gold yeah, kind of exactly like, this dark amber. Fluorescent almost. It, it it just hit the spot. It was really like I took a drink. Said, ah, that's actually that's not bad. Took another drink to kind of confirm it. It's like <laughs> this is decent. Like mm. judging the book by the cover, where I've been writing it off for weeks. And I was like, man, actually, this beer slaps. <laughs> Not again. Guys, the only way to get through a Sunday night in the Sutherland household is finding a, night, a good beer that claps. Jump, jump, <laughs> jump, jump on the Merlin, because, guys, you've heard it here first. It claps. Yeah, I thought I, I, I liked it, but I thought it was kind of disappointing. I was really looking forward to trying it, but the taste profile was just neither here nor there for me. Wasn't really an APA. Wasn't mm. really an English pale ale. Like, mm. just a fairly hoppy, slightly bitter brew. Uh, right. As I say, massively drinkable, yep. massively sessionable, but mm-hmm. it just didn't quite land for me. Um, See, yeah, but maybe the that's... only thing missing for you was you probably weren't doing your ironing. That's what it is. That that that's that's the missing element. Mm-hmm. Yep. From this, it's a, it's a a good working dad's from this beer. Setup. Yeah, Dave, I'm neither working that, nor oh. a dad, so, so that's that's the problem. I'm gonna pop some yours. kids out. He's gonna have that. <laughs> I'm gonna pop some kids out, order some Broughton in, and you know what? Have myself a damn good time. Um, Rap but yeah, but, a Maryland or two. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. maybe Maybe that's what the Merlin was going for, a kind of hybrid of the two styles, the APA and the EPA. Um, I don't know, but it was good. It was drinkable. So, mm. you know, I was happy. Um, so time for the away section of this. <laughs> oh, good God. So we've confirmed Broughton. We heart Broughton. Uh, but what else have you been uh, drinking this week, Stu? I think nothing, Thomas. I've been uh, fairly oh, well man. behaved. Not even been buying any beer. Disappointing. Very disappointing. I know. It's just working on the back catalog. I mean, I, I knocked back a tin of uh, Stuart's Radical Road Triple Hopped American IPA. Come I've, on. I've spoke about that before. You can. Like, you, we can do doubles if you want. Yeah, it was. Again, <laughs> I'm sitting doing work for the podcast on like a Friday night. And I just ne- needed just a wee tinny to help me with my Photoshop. Some, something to get him through. <laughs> yeah. So, and Radical Road, I've said it myself, is my most reliable Stuart Brewing beer. So I thought, that's it. I don't need to think hard about this decision. You'll do. Crack it open. Have a wee drink. It kept me going. And I believe they've got a, like, a, I should have researched this before bringing it up, but they have a reverse radical road on tap. Reverse radical road? Yes, and I'm not too sure what that means. Mm. But I always see pictures of it on tap or like like yeah. the guest ale in pubs. Um, ah. So they've been sharing a lot of the images that there's a reverse radical road. No, I've heard, I've heard about this. It's the one where the foam's at the bottom and then the beer is like at the top it's really interesting it's like you drink it and you get hit right, okay i know of... i can't even pour a pint to save myself get hit. <laughs> it's this on tap not... every day in stuart Sutherland's house. this is not fucking christopher <laughs> nolan pulls a pint <laughs> like 10 ints <laughs> You didn't need. We 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 got it. I got it. I mean, maybe they didn't get it, but you know, so you didn't need to. You, you know, know, like movie that. and the, the beer. You can ask me the, if the, I we could have that moment silence, beer. so I could listen to the, <laughs> the applause from our listeners. <laughs> They're coming in hot. I could hear them. Oh shit! My neighbors are having sex again. Um. So. That was uh, a pretty good week then, Stu. A nice revisit and a couple of um, brewskis from the boys. Uh, yes. I personally, last weekend, uh, I want to say, I returned to a beer I first tried last year for the first time, and it's from a brewery based in my birthplace, and that is Magic Rock Brewing out of Huddersfield Town. Mm-hmm. And I visited their Surreal Stout. Ah. Man, I was so happy to see this 
pop up in my local Tesco, just completely randomly mm. one evening. Um, and it's as good out the tin as it was on tap. Um, I think it takes the title of my favourite canned stout. Right. What what honestly what percentage is it rocking? So six percent right on the money, I think. And it's That's reasonable. Yeah, because because I think with that, with the percentage, it's like Murphy's, but with like an extra bite. You know, it's got those nutty, slight coffee notes, and that culminates in a very roasted taste. And I think William Bros got very close to swiping that title, a favorite can stout, when I tried their profanity stout last. Oh week. yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the beer fifty two. That was amazing. Uh, it's a close matchup for sure, but yeah, this one um, from Magic Rock is gorgeous, and I'll be on the lookout to see if any of their other brews make it down here. Um, hopefully, that would be lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that was our last beers watched. Uh, okay, is that time of the show where we ditch this half-baked cooking segment and pull one we prepared earlier out of the oven? Uh, listeners, Please enjoy our canny conversation. Don't worry, we discuss bottles too. With the dazzling Dave McGowan. Over to you, Thomas Jew. Okay, dear listeners, we are lucky to be sitting here tonight with Mr. Dave McGowan, one of the owners of Broughton Brewery. Uh, Thanks for being here with us tonight. Dave, much appreciated. How are you? I'm good, thanks. And thanks very much for the invite. Looking forward to chatting with you, as always. Yeah, no, honestly, (laughs) uh, our pleasure. Thank you for coming on. I'm also here with Stu. He's reminded me to remind you guys that he is here as well. Um, Ah, no need for introduction, Tom. uh... Everyone knows I'm here. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently, I'll be doing a bad job introducing him. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, I mean, why don't we just start at the top? Dave, I mean, um, what was your introduction to beer in particular? You know, craft beer, was it kind of from there from your, you know, teenage years or was it something you got into when you you were a bit older? Well, I was actually thinking about this and um, I I have to say that my my introduction to uh, beer was before uh, my teenage years and I'm Ah. thinking back to uh, some point in the 70s when there was a guy who lived across the road from me and his dad had a cask of beer in their garage. Mm. And I remember myself and my friends having a little sneaky drink of it <laughs> when we were about nine or ten years old. <laughs> and um, the, the, the next part of the, the, the journey was uh, probably uh, smuggling uh, bottles of beer into the school disco. And um, I had a scenario that I went back to my old school about four or five years ago. And uh, I took along some beers, and it was really good to actually be able to legitimately walk in the door <laughs> and get some applause and thanks for it as well, <laughs> as opposed to have to sneak it in. Um, but in terms of how I get into beer, I started to work for Scottish and Newcastle in the late 80s. And at that time, they still had the Holyrood Brewery, which I think is now a McDonald Hotel that, you know, that whole area is a hive of brewing and some fantastic stories come out of there. I think at one point there were uh, 40 breweries in that part of Edinburgh alone oh. if you got the Royal Mile. Mm-hmm. And the last one to close, little known fact, is the Jane J. Morrison Brewery, which I think closed in 2006. And I, you know, I wanted to, to work in an area that I enjoyed. So I mainly worked in sales and marketing roles, but I was also fortunate um, I got to go on a brewing and distilling course, which was at Harry Watt University. It was actually run by Jeff Palmer. If you're familiar with Jeff, he's uh, now a social rights campaigner against uh, slavery, uh, but he's also a professor and I think vice chancellor at Harry Watt University. Oh, um, okay. And I, I worked there for a number of years, but I, I was very fortunate in the mid 1990s. I, I got involved with a job um, that was brewing and uh, selling specialist beers. And as a result, I got to go around the world to lots of different breweries. And you know, saw the, the, I remember going to the Zipfer Brewery, um, which is in uh, Austria. I went to Lindemans in Belgium, uh, Hauga, who 
probably got the pronunciation wrong, but they do delirium, if uh, anybody's familiar with that. It's started to appear in some of the supermarket shelves. Um, mm -hmm. And I went all around the country to breweries looking at different styles of beer. So, uh, you know, I was like a boy in a sweetie shop. Um, yeah, it was bet, absolutely yeah. fantastic. And um, it was probably a, about that point in the late uh, 90s that I decided, you know, I, I know what I'm doing here um, and I would love to have my own brewery. And it took a while before uh, that was able to come to fruition. But there's now uh, four of us involved with uh, Broughton. It's a fantastic organisation. Uh, we've got a great team. And, um, it, you know, for me, it was, a, you know, probably like most young people, you want to be a footballer, you're not good enough, you want to be a Formula One driver, you're not good enough, you don't get the gig as a guitarist in the clash, but you get to have your own brewery. <laughs> um, and uh, so we, we took it over uh, towards the end of 2015. Uh, it's been a roller coaster, as you can imagine. But what I particularly like in the last 10 or 12 years is there's, there's now a beer for everybody, and there's lots and lots mm. of new breweries coming on the scene. And some of them, um, you know, make absolutely fantastic beers. There, there's some I personally don't like, but technically they're really good products. And I think now, you know, there's it's not just big mass market uh, lager brands, you know, with a Spanish comedian fronting up a Spanish brand and an American fronting up an American beer. It's, it's mm. um, you know, there's lots and lots of different styles. And I think the way that people are now focusing on the quality, the authenticity, um, what the liquid actually tastes like, mm -hmm. rather than the sort of character or joke in the front, I, I think that's just great. And it's it's also good for jobs as well, particularly, you know, it's um, it, we've got uh, we, we've got 10 people at our brewery. And if you think, I think it's about 150 breweries in Scotland. And, you know, they vary from three or four up to, you know, several hundred. These are all creating jobs and they're good quality course, jobs. Yeah, they also have spin off, you know, in terms of, you know, you need fabricators, you need welders, you need joiners, you need brewers. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good for the economy as well. And I, I'm just proud to be part of that and enjoy it. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Now, whilst you kind of answered parts of that question, there, what was like the point that convinced you to like brew beer? So th th this is uh, something I, I get asked quite a lot, not what convinced me to brew beer, but why didn't you answer the question, David? <laughs> <laughs> no, you did. You did. <laughs> yeah. I might have covered questions one to three with that first answer. <laughs> no, so um, what, what, what uh, convinced me to do it? Well, I, th I think the key thing is you have, you have a passion for it. You think mm -hmm. you, can, you can do something that's different. Um, but as well as those things, it, it takes a, a, a certain amount of, you know, conviction and self-belief, mm -hmm. particularly in my case, I work for big corporate organisations. Um, and, you know, it would be easy, and uh, not, not easy, but, you know, in some ways you could just stay there and just, you know, well, go do what you do for the rest of your days. But um, circumstance uh, for me personally meant that my kids were getting a little bit older. This had all, this was always something I wanted to do. Mm. And just around about 2013, decided, right, I'm going to do it. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I had enough self-belief in terms of, you know, my own capabilities, but also had a real interest and a real passion in the area that I was going for. So mm -hmm. um, th those were all the factors that all came together. And, yeah. uh, you know, thankfully it worked in my favour. Brilliant. Um, so, yeah, to actually get into kind of you joining Broughton, I'm assuming it wasn't, you know, you went on an interview and had to kind of, you know, do, do any preparation the night before, just was swatting up. It was, it was it a bit more easier than that? Or what was the actual process of getting into the company? Well, the, the process was myself and uh, a couple of others that I'd worked beside was uh, four of us in total. Um, we knew that the business was unofficially up for sale. Oh, and, okay, uh, okay. So we we made an approach to the owner. Um, there was the usual uh, toing and throwing, but I think one of the things that um, he liked about us that we were genuinely passionate about beer, and we recognised that you know this was in many ways a unique brewery. You know that if you go back to when uh, Broughton was founded in uh, 1979. 
breweries at that point were consolidating, they were closing, there was less and less. I think when it opened, there was, there was about eight or nine independent breweries in Scotland. So it very much went against the trend. And, you know, whilst uh, the people who set it up were, uh, dare I say, it, quite conservative by nature, uh, they, they were almost, they epitomised that sort of punk spirit and that they went against the grain and they mm. did something different. So, you know, we had to ensure that we, we, we respected uh, the authenticity, the, the traditions uh, and the beers that, that, that came out of the, um, the brewery. And, um, you know, there was a financial aspect as well, but that was really what it was about was, you know, we, th we thought there was something that we could bring to the party. And, um, you know, the values that we had aligned with, with those of the previous owner. Um, one of the really nice parts of that journey is that Broughton was first set up by uh, two individuals, a guy called David Younger, um, and that's from the Younger Brewing family. If you're familiar with, you know, they started off in Alloa. They've got a really strong tradition uh, in Scotland, or awareness in Scotland. They were also very strong in export and in London as well. So David was uh, part of the Younger family who had originally going from Alloa to Ayr, sorry, uh, Alloa to Edinburgh. And the other uh, guy was uh, James Collins. And uh, I, I don't know much about James Collins apart from uh, he was from Collins Publishing. So when you're younger, if any of your listeners remember, uh, yeah. you know, your pocket German, your pocket French. Oh, <laughs> you okay, you okay, into the yeah. class when you were uh, cheating in your exams to look up the <laughs> translation. So he was part of that family. Uh -huh. So that's where there's, there's a bit of a kind of character and literally aspect to some of the branding. So you t two really nice stories. But the, the reason I mentioned them was that the younger family um, ceased to be involved in the brewery around about 1994, 95. And for various reasons, when we took over 2015, they actually hadn't been in the premises for nearly 20 years. And we got David Younger back in. Um, he's a fairly regular visitor. And now we've got one of his daughters, Camilla, is back working for us part time. Oh, wow. And Camilla had been there right at the start. I think she was sort of mid-teens, you know, helping out family business. Mm. Uh, she's come back to us. So, um, you know, it's, it's, re it's really nice to, you know, just play a part of that. And, you know, um, in, in terms of, you know, the, the, the younger uh, family, there's a couple of different strands and there's a couple of different younger families. But you're looking at a family who can trace the, the Bruin dynasty back to the 1850s. So, wow. you know, they, they kind of know their stuff. And, yeah. you know, when they speak, I listen. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> David, when it comes to your personal taste, where do you lean? Are you more of a traditional ales type of guy or are you for like the more exotic craft beers? And now obviously your your brewery has a nice label of both. So yeah. Yeah. It, it's not obvious which way you lean if you do. Yes. Well, I tend to go through phases of what my favourite mm. beer is. Uh, and I think quite a lot of people do that. Yeah. And um, one of the ones I absolutely love, and there's an interesting story about behind it, is uh, a beer we do called Champion Double Ale. No, we're, we're, we're not doing that at the moment um, for you know, just lockdown reasons and such like. But essentially, mm. it's a mix of a Scotch ale and a stout. It's a 50-50 blend. And Sounds amazing. For me, that, that sort of beer is quite different from the, the style that I would normally drink, but I just absolutely love it. And um, the, 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 the background to this is this is a brand that had been in the Broughton family in the, the early 2000s. And I don't know why, but they'd stopped brewing it about 2007, 2008. Hmm. And um, I said to Ian, who's our head brewer, what, what does Champion Double Ale taste like in kind of describes it, but, you know, unless you actually taste it. And I said, well, tell me a, a beer that, you know, it's kind of close to. And he said, well, if you take Old Jock, that's our kind of Scotch mm -hmm. ale, and if you take Stout Jock, that's our Stout, and you do a sort of 50-50 blend, ah. that's what it would taste like. That's so the best he, sounding snipe boy, I think. Yeah. Well, it doesn't, have the, it doesn't have the black pattern in it, but... <laughs> so yours truly immediately rushes home that night 
makes up the 50-50 blend mm. and uh, tries it. Like, oh, that's brilliant. I love it. I love it. I love it. And uh, but I then sort of, right, we're going to brew some of that. And of course, the rest of the team say, yeah, right, okay. Who are you going to sell it to? Oh, I don't know. I'll find somebody to sell it to. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that, that brand came back in the market basically because of my personal passion for it. Oh, um, so I'm very fond of that. Uh, at the moment, um, I am, uh, I'm just going to open one just now, if you're allowed to do that. Yeah. Uh, so our, uh, our lager is, you know, for me, simple, easy to drink. Um, I I like uh, the the uh, particularly the Munich uh, style lagers. I, I was fortunate enough. To, uh, um, I worked in Munich for a period of time, so uh, you know things like Augustiner and uh, Palaner and those those particular beers. And uh, so when we're doing some stuff in our lager, I'm constantly uh, on our bounty team. It's got to be as good as Augustina. It's got to be as good as Augustina. <laughs> um, so uh, we're getting there because we've got that kind of light sort of Hellas uh, taste. Yeah. In it, so yeah. I'm a fan of that. So if you don't yeah, mind, I'm yeah. going to just pour I one of these. Go for it. Cheers no. to yourselves and the, yeah. the, the audience as well. Cheers. So which one are you drinking just now? Yeah, I'm currently drinking the uh, the Session IPA and, I, and I, you and me are both fans of that, right, Stu? It's... I know. I tried that last night and I was just, Really good. Surprised because I'm I'm fussy when it's like session IPAs. And I always drink them. I said, man, that's it would be really good if it wasn't like not not it's not watered down, but it feels like that. It feels like it'd be good if it's stronger, but that defeats the point of session. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it, it's a really nice uh, liquid. That one, you know, it's it's easy to drink, it's mm-hmm. refreshing, but it's just got a wee bit of taste and a wee bit of character, in it, and that's something yeah. that. Um, really good. We try to do with yeah. all of our beers is just make sure that we've got a bit of character in it and just something that's a bit different. And particularly with some of our stronger beers, one of the things that we always try to do with them is we want people to drink them and think, hey, that's really good. But we also want them to think it's a serious beer as well. Mm. You know, and there's just, you know, you try and get a bit of complexity in there that just mm. challenges people to think, right, okay, let's get something to it. I'm, I'm going to try some more of that because, you know, mm. I want to, you know, experience that again. So that that's really important to the way that we do things. Is that is that the thinking behind the uh, the Hoppo uh, line? Um, I mean, what is the, the kind of history behind that? What was the thinking um, behind its kind of... Well, we, we, we had um, our sort of darker more traditional style beers mm. and what we wanted to do with hoppo was to have a range of beers that would appeal to people who had heard of this thing called craft but didn't want to be scared by the devil ate my grandmother's triple hop goes banana bread beer mm-hmm. it was i'm sure <laughs> you know <laughs> they, they don't they don't want to drink carling they probably progressed beyond you know estrella or peroni but they're mm. not yet ready to go absolutely full out the idea After was the tits on that, rocky road milk stout <laughs> yeah 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 uh-huh, uh-huh. so we just wanted something that was uh, you know, that was easy to drink, that was a bit of fun, but had had uh, something to it. And, um, you know, the the, uh, the the character we've got, the, the kind of hopeful character, the mm-hmm. hippo in a barrel, um, you get some really interesting spellings of it. You know, that, that uh, you know, it's 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 fun, it's quirky, um, but the beer's good as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What I do actually love about that hippo artwork was, I th- think, it was it was it last year you had a, like a campaign to save the brewery and mm-hmm. you were selling artwork and it was like almost yeah. like an Andy Warhol effect with all the different hippos. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. I think I found the campaign six months after it closed and I was like, oh, that would <laughs> you look, can I still put lovely. money in, still put money in. <laughs> <laughs> that artwork looks lovely. I want that in my well, living room. Well, I'll t- I'll tell you what happened with that uh, artwork and I'll I'll get you one. I'll get one a uh, couple ones printed off for you was. Hmm. Um, but one of uh, the the team at the brewery, John, is quite a fan of the sort of Jackson Pollock, Andy Warhol mm. uh, mm-hmm. style artwork, and he, he collects prints and things like that. And um, when we we, we we did a rebrand a couple of years ago, and he actually um, he said to me one day, he said, "By the way, I've, I've asked uh, J- JP, who's the designer, if he would just do something, uh, you know, a little bit different for me, and just." 
you know, a, a graphic that captured them all. And that sort of, you know, um, goodness me, the, the sort of New York uh, sort of factory style uh, imagery of the, 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 the 70s and 80s. Uh, mm -hmm. So we got, them, we got them put down as prints. And then the other thing that we did, um, I don't know if you, you, you saw it, but we had uh, this particular one on the market oh, um, yeah. where we've kind of taken the colours mm -hmm. um, that are in the print that you describe. And mm -hmm. uh, so this is quite a kind of complex, but it's quite I dark uh, for yeah. a double IPA. But it was, we wanted to get, you know, a, a, it was a beer that was complex, but, you know, it's, there's a bit of complexity and something interesting going on with the artwork as well without going, mm -hmm. you know, too over, overboard and, you know, trying to, to stay treated true to our roots mm -hmm. i know you can't and shouldn't pick your favorite child but which beer from uh broughton hopple is your favorite saying that i think he's you've kind of just you answered that with your yeah, yeah you i, I think well it. can i cheat slightly because stuart you you're i see you've got the um our proper ipa uh, bottle of that beside you and if i'm drinking a, a can or a bottle Mm -hmm. um, I would normally go for our lager, but actually, if I'm drinking in cask, the proper IPA on cask is absolutely superb. Oh. You just get out, you get all, it's almost like a creaminess. So, you've got uh, mm. the sweetness, there's a little bit of spiciness, mm -hmm. um, there's a really nice balance, you've got a bit of maltiness, but then in cask, you just get a, a lot more body to it, and uh, it's it's really, really good in cask. The other one are 6.2 IPA in cask. That's really good as well. Uh, it's a bit dangerous, to be quite honest, because when you <laughs> taste it in cask, you think, oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's probably about 5%. And then you've had four of them. And you think, I should know it's 6.2%. <laughs> is, it, is it still 6.2 on cask? Because I know a lot yeah. of beers obviously are a bit lower when they when they hit cask form yeah, uh, compared yeah. to their you know, bold or canned form. Yeah, no, it's 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 still it's still six point two. Oh, so. Love to try that. Yeah. yeah, love to try that. Do you? This is a pure novice question, but do you put out a lot of casks, like say weekly or? Yes and no. At uh, you know our peak during the summer, particularly when you've got Edinburgh Festival on and things oh, like yeah. that. Um, you know we can be doing 150, 200 casks a week. Um, obviously we've taken a real hit in the last. Uh, Couple of, of years, mm. and you know what? One of the challenges in that is, you know, a lot of pubs, not all pubs, but a lot of pubs are either owned by the big brewers or they mm. are in the back pocket of the big brewers. And I can understand this; I don't have a problem with it. But it is a fact that when pubs start to reopen, and you know, I think in Scotland we're a wee bit behind where they are south of the border. Mm -hmm. uh, if you own a thousand pubs. Then and you've got a brewery, you're going to want to have your beers in there. And, yeah, you know, the, the big brewers are, are good at giving access to uh, smaller uh, brewers like ourselves. But at the same time, if their business has been, you know, running at 40, 50 percent for the last two years, they've got to make some tough decisions. So pubs, pubs are a, a very difficult market at the moment. What what's been really good for us during the last eighteen months is our online sales, mm. and the we are getting more and more of them going south of the border. Um, and as you might be aware, uh, Adrian Tierney Jones is just bringing out a new book about. Um, oh yeah, the top two fifty. Top two fifty. We've got beers in there. And inevitably, you'll get people who will just be ticking off a sort of bucket list going through all oh, the yeah, 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 cool. from all over the country. Yeah. And uh, you know that 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 will be good for us. We we are seeing more and more sales come uh, from south of the border, which which is really really good. Very mm -hmm. pleased. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, well, just to kind of touch upon any uh, career highlights you'd like to kind of offer up there that, that that'd be very interesting is there anything that really kind of stands out in your uh, your time at Broughton I, I think uh, the thing that I am most proud of um, and this has not just been the case uh, at Broughton uh, but at other organizations I've worked for would be two things first of all it's the people you work beside and the friendships you make that mm. go beyond just day-to-day and -day, um, working relationships so 
you know, the, the, those are, um, you know, fantastic and they're very, very important to me personally. Yeah. Um, and then the other thing is um, when you walk in a pub or you're in a supermarket and you see somebody pick up your beer and mm. you know, you're just, I did that. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's, not, it's not arrogant in any way. It's mm. just, it's a real pride that yeah. something you have, help to create something course, you've played yeah. a part in somebody thinks that that's good enough for mm. them to spend their money on for sure and, yeah. um you know you just i, I get just a, a huge uh, a degree of you know self-satisfaction you've you've, mm-hmm. uh, you've you brighten somebody's life it might only be for 10 15 minutes while they're drinking the beer but um 10 15 seconds with the long yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so the, 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 those would be the, the two main ones for me. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's awesome. And obviously, speaking earlier, how you said you're finding more of your beer going uh, south of the border, it was actually down to Tom that introduced me to Broughton Ales. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, yeah. Originally, yeah, it was um, it was Old Jock. That's the one uh, for mm-hmm. me. It is kind of the only one I can get really in terms of um, in terms of shops, but. You know what a you know in terms of the kind of local places, but you know what, what a beer it is. Um, mm-hmm. But it's opened up like a you know a, a whole whole world of uh, of amazing beers, and and we've covered a few on the show, and we'll be covering another one come uh-huh. this episode. So um, I think that goes to show it says a lot about about the range of beers for sure. Yeah, well, Old Jock's very much been the beer um, that has it's done exceptionally well in the last two years during mm. lockdown. It's a great beer. beer. We uh, we gave it a bit of a makeover a couple of years ago. Uh, that was quite funny, and we we, we 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 you know made one or two adjustments to the character in the front. Uh, somebody actually sent us uh, a picture of the old bottle and the new bottle, and just had the tagline on it: "Old Jock is now a top shagger." <laughs> 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 and you thought, right, he how a- do we use that in our social media yeah. campaigns? Yeah. <laughs> and the thing is, you can't. And the beer's good not- as well. Sorry, Stuart. No, you know you're fine. Um, that's it. You can't not go into like a Lidl's or an Audi without coming face to face with Old Jock as well. Mm-hmm. Like it was after Tom brought it to my attention, and I just saw his wee face on the shelf, and I thought, yeah. it's here too. And there was like, I can't escape it. He's everywhere. Yeah. Well, do you know it's now? Uh, I think it's it's borderline top five bottle deal in Scotland. Oh, amazing! And uh, you know it was four or five years ago it was a number eighteen or nineteen. It's now top five, so we are really really proud of that. Mm-hmm. And it's it's the brand, uh, the beer that when we see sales south of the border, that that's where most of them are coming through, mm-hmm. and particularly from areas where there's a strong camera franchise uh, yeah, and where there's a sense. strong camera community. Yeah. And it's, you know, it, it's not similar liquid wise, but, you know, it probably appeals to an audience who would drink things that thinks they know peculiar and uh, maybe mm-hmm. some of the stronger variants of Hobgoblin, most certainly McEwen's Champion Ale. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, like uh, checking uh, all of Tom's boxes. Yeah. Well, I, I, I you know, I, I, I won't uh, go into it in too much detail, but I was at one of the team that founded McEwen's Champion Hill. So there's a bit of a uh, gamekeeper turn poacher in this oh, one. Nah. Um, but I, I, I can say that, uh, you know, McEwen's Champion Hill is still a great beer. Mm-hmm. Um, but all jokes are better beer. Controversial. <laughs> and even earlier tonight, I, I decided to try a pure joke. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. I am so surprised at the taste of this beer. It's mm. different, isn't it? Ah, the, like the, the caramel, like the label doesn't lie. <laughs> yeah. So uh, th- we wanted to uh, we wanted to do a non-alcohol beer, and you know, th- there's lots of really good non-alcohol beers out there. So we wanted mm-hmm. to do something that was a bit different. So the particular style of that is more uh, similar to sort of malt beers, which are are very common in Africa and in the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. And uh, in terms of developing the recipe for, excuse me, <clears throat> um, we uh, we spoke to brewers in French Guyana, and uh, they actually helped us to develop the recipe for it. So wow. um, it, it is different. It's not, you know, 
if if you want a an non alcoholic beer, I think some of the, the the German fruit beers are pretty good, and you know there's some other ones around there. But you know why do something the same as everything else? So we wanted to do something uh, sure. that was just a wee bit different. And I think what we found with it is that uh, those that like it really like it. Um, mm -hmm. I have to be honest and say that uh, I have been known to mix it with rum, um, <laughs> which kind of defeats the point of a non-alcoholic <laughs> beer. But you know, you got to go for it. So a I mixer's guess, a mixer. Yeah, well, I get told off by the the, the team at the brewery uh, for um, telling people that I, I use it as a mixer for rum, but it's it's pretty good to stick <laughs> something about it. <laughs> oh, that's a good thing that he's actually. Uh, post on your social media as well like your beers in combination with like cocktails yeah yeah and i thought that was really interesting well that that was something that um the 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 boys in the brewery um just in one of the quiet days you know kind of messing around and we were we were talking about uh, boiler makers and mm -hmm. you know various other sort of half and half combinations and we said, well, well, why don't we have a look at some uh, some beer cocktails? And there's one we do uh, with the lager that's got honey in it and chili in it, and and that's mm. it, it, that is challenging, um, mm -hmm. but but it's it, it's really good. And um, some of the other ones uh, we do where we use uh, uh, rum and Kahlua and stuff like that, um, you know, they're pretty good. And uh, I've been known to one or two too many of those as well. That I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> of, uh, I, I tend to, uh, unfortunately, because I'm a beer drinker, well, not unfortunately, but just when I drink other things like spirits, I tend to drink them in the same quantities. I drink beer. Ah, <laughs> just, just, yeah, you drink, yeah. Well, you, you drink it by the pint, don't you? That's yeah, what I'm going to do. Sure, sure, uh, yeah. so, uh, it's an early night for David. Yes. <laughs> so there's been a few of those. The Six Nations is coming up, and I've noticed you have been touting about like a new beer for the occasion called Sinbin. Yes. Would you be able to tell us a little bit more about that and yeah. how we can get it? Right, okay. Well, Sinbin has, um, we've actually had that for a few years, and it's just a light, easy drinking, refreshing Scottish style pale ale. Mm -hmm. uh, bit citrusy on the finish, um, but you know, one that if you're going to be watching uh, in a pub or somewhere like that, you can mm -hmm. do your four of them. Uh, as to where you can get it, I don't have an encyclopedic list, but I was in, uh, for anybody who happens to be in Edinburgh, I was in Platform 5 today, and they're about to put it on, um, Cumberland Bar in Edinburgh is about to put it on, some of the Weatherspoons across Scotland mm -hmm. are putting it on. The Dublin Anywhere Platform. in Birmingham, Dave. Uh, sadly, <laughs> sadly not, but if you want to tout yourself to do a bit of wholesaling for us. <laughs> okay, well done. Um, I think in... Uh, what we might do with it in, in uh, future years is to uh, put it in a bottle and uh, just do right, you know, so right. short minimum. Yeah, yeah, right. uh, but the moment is just a cast beer, but it's, it's nice. It's, you know, just nice, easy to drink, refreshing. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's not too strong. So, you know, you can just enjoy a few of them while you're with your, your friends. That's mm -hmm. where, it, where it fits in. Lovely stuff. Um, what's your favourite pub to go and enjoy a beer? And more importantly, does it have Bowen on tap? Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think my favourite pub, it's a little bit like the earlier question of what's your favourite beer. You go through sort of phases as yeah, to of um, what, what your, your favourite is. So uh, if I can, I'm going to call out a few. Go for it. So I, uh, I regularly go into the Canny Mans in Edinburgh. Really good pub, lovely staff, well run. If I'm going into the centre of Edinburgh and um, I thoroughly enjoy the Cafe Royal, I just think what a great place, magnificent architecture. Um, and at the moment, my favourite is one in Glasgow, the Lauriston. And if you've never been in the Lauriston, you should. It, um, it's a family run uh, pub. It's very traditional in the way that it looks. It looks a wee bit like something out of a 1970s sitcom. Um, yeah, but perfect. the quality of the beer is just amazing. You know, they, they take care in their cellars. There's glassware they serve. Regularly wow. wins uh, camera awards. Uh, and it's also opposite. Um, now, I get mixed up. I think it's the O2 Academy. So if you happen to be going there for a gig or something like that, mm -hmm. you must go in. Um, oh, wow. Family, Same family who have run it. 
for, I think, 35, 40 years. They don't take credit cards. It's cash. Um, <laughs> they, yeah. they, and they are, they are lovely to deal with. Um, mm -hmm. We, oh, wow. we have uh, our Merlin's on there at the moment, actually. Um, mm -hmm. Just, uh, it's brilliant, brilliant ambience. So. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll probably just caveat that by saying, of course, every pub that stocks our beer is my favourite. <laughs> yeah. and, 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 and if I'm going, if I'm going slightly further afield, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been, but the Dead Rabbit in New York. I've only been two or three times. I don't want to make no, excuses if I'm no. over there every week. It's just a brilliant pub. Sadly, there doesn't have any of our beer in there, um, but just absolutely brilliant. Uh, one of the, I think it's regularly in the sort of top fifty bars in the world. Oh, wow. I, I, okay. I love it. Okay. I think that one you mentioned in Glasgow, me and Stu, sadly missed. We had a wee crawl through Glasgow in December, so I think that's going to have to be for the second round, Tom. Well, yeah. it's, There's too it's, many bars to be honest. Well, it's not a problem. It's actually a good problem to have, but there is too many good pubs, it seems, in Glasgow. Yeah, it's, it's next to um, Bridge Street Subway, mm. so it picks up quite a lot. Um, from the the subway crawl, the underground crawl. That yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, so, but the the good side about that is, if you get into uh, Glasgow, you can easily get the underground at Buchanan Street, and you know you're there in ten minutes or so. So it's pretty accessible, albeit it's about a mile south of the oh. river. Ah, okay. Huh. That, that saves us getting kicked out of an Uber, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that for the second time. No, no. <laughs> Once in a lifetime kind of thing, that is. All right. Um, so I'm going to talk about your social media again because I'm a big fan yeah. of it. Like, uh -huh. whilst it's it wasn't good at the time, but those photos of the flooding at the brewery was... God, I'm trying to... Like, I'm taking this in positive spin, but... Blood, it was hilarious. Like, <laughs> well, come on, isn't it too. great? But it makes for some great social media. Yeah, yeah. So th these are the ones in... Uh, when was it December? No, mm. no, was earlier than that. It was November. So where the brewery lies is um, we're on a floodplain. Uh, so it's in the middle of a couple of valleys. And as a result, what we do is we, um, we, we protect ourselves by during the winter months, we keep all the stock three pallets high. So we've got mm. three pallets underneath any stock. Um, so that if there's any flooding, it doesn't get in, it doesn't damage the beer. But it, it's it, it it's you know bloody worrying when it happens. Mm. But it's interesting because mm. there's nothing you can do about it. You you just yeah. have to stand and watch it. And when it happened yeah. this time, we thought right, well let's let's have a bit of fun around this. Mm. Um, so we did uh, the stuff around Noah's Ark and, you know, the beers <laughs> two by two. And we kind of used the awful character uh, to tell a bit of a story. And um, fortunately, uh, in this instance, the river went down pretty, or the stream went down pretty quickly. Um, oh, yeah. So it was away after three or four days. We didn't have any problems with electrics or anything like mm -hmm. that. That's good. We just got to check the brakes and the vans and the forklifts and all of these uh, sorts of mm. things. Um, and have to come to work in your waders. Yeah, you have to come to work in your waders indeed. So, But the way that the actual brewery is laid out is the actual brewing area where we have the mash tun, the fermentation vessels, uh, they actually sit, I don't know, probably about two feet above uh, ground ah. level. So we're never at any risk of um, the actual production equipment uh, mm. being flooded. It's you know, warehouses and stuff like that. So, okay. um, and it's just, uh, it just becomes part, you know, I'm a city boy, uh, but you learn so much about um, the countryside and the, the people, the people there. So we get, we get bad flooding, you know, it's almost like, you know, the seven days of the week, you know, seven colours of the rainbow. They happen, mm -hmm. happen every six, seven years. Yeah. So last time it happened was uh, six years ago. And what was so interesting for me was, it literally happened about four weeks after we bought the brewery. So you're oh, thinking, oh, just bought this brewery, we're flooded, oh shit, here we go. This, this is it, it's the <laughs> yeah, um, But what I love to see is the the resilience um, and, uh, uh, amongst all the team. And I, I, don't, I don't like to use generalization. It's about folk from who are from rural communities or the borders community, but they just got on with it. And mm -hmm. for me, it sort of captured the spirit of, almost our brand old jock 
that yeah. you know people people just got on with it. There was no fuss. There was no drama. You know, they they got their wellies on. Uh, we dealt with it. We moved on, and um, there was no history. And and that was just that spirit, that community spirit. You you, you cannot capture it. You you try and capture it within a bottle in some ways. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it was just so lovely to see. Well, other than five feet below water, where's the strangest place you've seen your beers pop up? <laughs> goodness me, goodness me. Um, so one of my colleagues, uh, a couple of years ago, she climbed uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Mm. Oh, and um, so she took a bit of branding up there with her. So ah. I think that's... Uh, a- I think I don't think she took any bottles or cans, but there was a bit of branding uh, mm. for Broughton made its way to the top of uh, Kilimanjaro, <laughs> and then uh, occasionally cool. you, you just see some stuff crops up. Um, my son was on holiday in a very uh, a sort of bodega in uh, in Spain, and they, they had uh, our beers from all throughout the years in there. Um, oh. So you just see some wonderful things and. There's, there's also, there's a lot of people in the States with the surname Broughton. Um, mm. So, um, you know, very often if they're over here, uh, they'll take a bottle back with them and, you know, they send <laughs> photos. And, uh, so, so you got all sorts of different ones from different wow. areas. <laughs> You've uh, not had an email from Jock Broughton demanding free beer. <laughs> no, no, no. It's... Uh, <laughs> it, 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 we the, we want to get into the states. It's, it's a it's a it's a it's a difficult market in terms of exporting. But we're mm-hmm. I've been working away on it for a couple of years. I, I think we might get it away this summer. But it's um, that'd be great. Yeah. And to be honest, if we just get everybody in the US called Broughton to buy one beer, that's not, we, 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 we can go Joe, on after that. Joe C K Broughton. Yeah, that's all you need. That's all you need. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh. Right, um, I guess we'll we'll bring it home now with the question we've been asking uh, all of our, our interviewees uh-huh. is uh, could you recommend a beer to our listeners? You know, something that you'd you'd find in most shops. A non non broughton one. A non broughton <laughs> beer. <laughs> I don't want to say that part. If we if we're allowed to talk about non broughton beers, yeah. We would like to get a recommendation from you. Um, they're all crap. They're, they're all compared no, no, to no. Broughton. <laughs> no, if, if people are looking for uh, beers, you know, that are reasonably widely available, um, there's, uh, I think Palaner is 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 in quite a few Tesco's at the moment. Uh, it's from Munich. Mm. It's really good. P A U L A N E R. Uh, it's a really really nice uh, just example of a Hellas style lager. Mm. Um, and in terms of, I'm just trying to think of beers that you know you would get, you know, reasonably widely available. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's another one from uh, Germany which I'm starting to see more and more called ABK. I don't know much about the. Oh, background. that's a good one. Uh, yeah. It's, it's in, I think it's in co-op stores. It's in a big bottle. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's um, it's it's pretty good, pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, and um. I would also, uh, because I've, I've been there a few times and I'm very uh, fond, but, you know, if you're looking for something that's got character and is just a really, really good, well-made beer, you can't go beyond Thick Snow Peculiar. It's uh, mm. just a fantastic beer. Yeah, um, we, we did it on the show it was last season, Stu, uh, season before, yeah, and I think, we, um, you know, it's one of my favourites, and I think, Stu, you know, you I like that one it, too, right? Yeah, I, I found a it bit, a bit strange. Part. But well, you, you liked it. <laughs> and brought it home with me. Yeah, <laughs> and I, and I can't let it, I can't let this go without plugging one of my, my own beers, which is, um, you know, we touched on it a few times. But Old Jock is an absolutely superb beer, and mm-hmm. you know, I think uh, you said Tom that um, it's it's available. You, you can buy it uh, our online shop. You know, for anybody that's interested in listening, we uh, it's on Amazon, but also it's in Nisa stores across the UK. Ah. Um, so you know. People are looking for it. Go into your local Nisa store. If they don't have it, tell them to get it, and they can get it via the central warehouse. So it's 
Um, I, I'm also conscious that if people are buying beers that they've not tried before, and you may be spending, you know, twenty quid for an online order, that's yeah. quite a lot. You know, yeah, you, you, course, you, course, you, most yeah. people would rather, you know, go into a local shop, spend a ten on get three or four different beers, hoping exactly. that there's, yeah, there's one sure, or two gems sure, in there. Yeah, so sure. if you're going to Nisa, it, it gives you that option. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. I think we will be run out of questions, but. Uh... Just was make it uh, <laughs> was, was really a, a good time. Sorry to speak over you, Tom, but uh, no, no, no. we've not had, we've not uh, asked you to like, shout out your social media or if there's yeah. any groups or uh, other accounts you want to uh, promote. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, if there's anybody who's interested in our beers. Uh, if you go along to our website, www.brotonales.co.uk. Mm-hmm. Alternatively, go to uh, thisyeargivebeer.com. Uh, that yeah. redirects to our website. And we, we have various sort of mixed case offers on there and such like. Um, we include delivery in the price. We get it out to you next day, DC24. Mm-hmm. Um, Twitter handle, at Broughton Ales. Um, we're on Facebook as well. You know, we keep a bit of, uh, there's a bit of dialogue and a bit of conversation goes on. And what we also try to do on uh, Facebook in particular is, I guess because I've worked in the brewing industry uh, so long, we, we try and put the odd interesting story in there. Mm. So one of the ones we put on, we've got a private Facebook, uh, Facebook group for people who are interested. They can uh, look to join that, just 79 Club. And um, I, I told the story on there recently of the kicker. And uh, the, the, the is, people who are listening will be aware that when beer comes back from a pub, there's generally a bit of sediment or even yeah. some beer still in the cask or keg. And brewers are allowed to reclaim the duty on that. It's a bit more complex, but um, they're allowed to reclaim the duty. What they obviously need to know is how much liquid is in there. Mm-hmm. And there's various ways you can do it, or, you know, just weights, all that sort of stuff. But there used to be a guy at the um, McEwen's Brewery in Edinburgh who had been there for so long that when the empty kegs come in, they would go along a conveyor belt and he would just kick them. And had been doing the job so long that he knew from the sound how much ah. liquid was in there. <laughs> so, um, so we put you know some interesting stuff because I'm a great... Mm-hmm. I, I don't know if, if, I, if I could also give a, a small plug for an organisation, in fact, a couple of organisations, the Scottish Brewer Brewing Archive Association, mm-hmm. um, which is based at Glasgow University, but they keep a lot of the history and artefacts from uh, breweries in Scotland over the years, and you know they've got tremendous stuff in there. They have the odd exhibition, and they're now trying to get a permanent home. So if anybody's interested in that side, uh, Scottish Brewing Archive Association, you can join them as well. Mm-hmm. And then also, uh, just a, a personal thing, is uh, I'm involved with a a, a drinks charity called the uh, Scottish Licensed Trade Benevolence Society. Uh, It's just known uh, in Scotland as the Ben. It's been on the go since 1864, so it's got a fair amount of history to it. And basically what that charity does is it raises money to help people who have worked in the drinks industry, who have maybe through working in smoky pubs got a, a... health problems, uh, with, okay. uh, respiratory, or they've got arthritis through lifting kegs and stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. again, if I can uh, g- give a wee plug for that one as well, uh, just uh, Scottish Licensed Trade, Trade Benevolent Society, you can Google them, you can check them out. They're there, and it's a great cause. And it's it's supporting people who have, will have served you in a pub, who will mm-hmm. have, you know, helped to get some of those beers that we, we're also fond of, that, you know, and days gone by so that you have the chance to enjoy them that's brilliant uh yeah guys make sure to uh to check out everything that david has just listed and you know i'd like to thank you david for joining us uh it's been fantastic really mm-hmm. interesting kind of insight into everything uh and hopefully we'll speak to you soon thank you and uh cheers to all the listeners thanks very much for supporting Broughton. Cheers, David. Just brilliant like brilliant that was uh fantastic mm-hmm. cheers Dave. Okay. thank you no, that was perfect. perfect thank you man thank you that was actually perfect absolutely perfect um i'm just gonna pop to the toilet um <laughs> so
So we hope you enjoyed that segment, ladies and gentlemen. And if you didn't, go back and listen to it again. It's a Magoa, not a Showa. It doesn't really, it doesn't really work. But let's just enjoy the process. Uh, Stu, now this is going to get serious. How do you think this holds up to the other jocks on the block? Um, Come on, man. I want the truth. That, well, they're all different styles. Just I mean, the truth. if you want me to compare it to other Imperial Battleweight styles, then maybe, but this one is... <laughs> it's, it's, of the many that are out there. Stout jock's just this smooth, easy going, surprisingly yeah. strong beverage, where... I feel like that's kind of been their MO, where it is. It's always been mm. a surprisingly smooth drink and beer. And, yeah, it just catches you off guard at, like, how actually really nice yeah. the, the, the jock range of brought and ales is. Like, dark, malty. I I am just continuing to be impressed with the, the, the brought and jock range sure. of beers. Yeah, for sure. Um I agree, man. Completely agree. You know, for me, it's almost like a Scotch Owl, but with those dark chocolate kind of uh, tones to it. You know what I mean? It almost fits in like kind of the uh, Scotch Owl category than it would in the stout category, almost. But I think it definitely works as a stout. But it's just, yeah, got that massive kind of uh, maltiness to it. Very easy drinking, surprisingly. And yeah, man, I don't know whether it tops the jocks for me, but it's, de- it's definitely up there. It would be kind mm. of, I'll be hard pressed to pick between this and uh, an old jock for sure. Because yeah. uh, that would be a very interesting head to head because they both taste you know, fantastic. Yeah, I, I mean, that's it. When thinking back, to what is like, the, the jock range? So obviously, style jock is the imperial style. Yeah, uh, Wee Jock was their Wee Heavy. Uh, Wee Jock was shilling. the export, yeah, the 80 shilling. Yeah. Um, so Scottish Shale. Stout, pardon me, uh, Stout Jock, no, sorry. Uh, Old Jock was the the Scotch Ale. Yeah. So, brought on our nail in these traditional Scottish beers. Sure, for sure. And, yeah, it, it just kind of stands... It does not stand the test of time. I don't know where I was going with that. Damn you, Imperial Barrowage Stout, sneaking up and <laughs> making me talk absolute shit. Um, but that's a good. If a, uh, that is a good sign. Sure. Man, I feel like I've just been slapped by Will Smith. Jesus Ooh. Christ. <laughs> More flustered, but I blame the beer. It's. Uh... Can you see the fresh prints on the side of my face? Christ. <laughs> Fresh Prince of Bell End, more like. Right, yeah, so I think we both agree. It's a fantastic beer. Gets the thumbs up from mm-hmm. us. Um, right, it's over. Another tour de force of podcast pandemonium in the archive. You'll be very happy to know we stopped recording over our old shows on tape and have now switched to digital for future generations to enjoy Doctor Who, Dad's Army. Forget them. If my great-grandchildren can't have a full episode run of my alcohol-induced mental and physical breakdown, what was the point of even doing the show? There, there wouldn't be one. That was, a, that was a pretty deep cut. Shout out to all two people who, two and a half people who, who enjoyed that reference. Yeah, I didn't get that one. Yeah, uh, it's at the lager logs to find it out is. what we do behind closed doors and sometimes even in front of open windows. My neighbours dig that stuff. They, they really do. Stu, what is happening at the moment with the social medias and, and things of that nature? I, I'm just sort of reminding our uh, followers, well, not reminding our followers, but uh, treating them to video <laughs> clips of these interviews. It's a treat, guys. So, yes, if you've been listening to this interview and you just thought, I wonder what the, these what me guys you and you. <laughs> or you, you, you yeah, interview well, me. Had it. When it, it's me and you, Tom, this dynamic duo that's throwing ourselves in front of brewers and Ambushes. YouTubers and um, the other guy. We just jumped there. Yeah, that guy. I you remember that. that guy. Yeah. You. You, guy guy uh, number one, one from the show 
Let's like, talk. Oh, great guy. Fantastic and if you're guy. wondering, like, what do all these these people look like? Well, that is it. Go on our Instagram at the Lager Logs. I'm posting video clips of these interviews. Not going the full hog, but I'm just trimming it down to like one question, mm. and you can kind of see us uh, talk with Mike or talk with Jeff, and this week talk with Dave. So there's just gonna be little snippets of interviews put across our Instagram, Twitter, and uh, some stuffs being sh- wait twitter instagram youtube that's the one YouTube. i keep forgetting about that's the one that's the one yeah, yeah so the, the more longer q and a's will end up on youtube and like the, the smaller questions will be on twitter and instagram yes yes i did that all those things that sue just mentioned uh we got some good stuff going up on the youtube just some great clips some highlights mm-hmm. check that out if you like you know what an hour I can't, I can't do that. I don't have time. This is that podcast. Check mm. out the YouTube, okay, for all you people with ADHD out there. Um, next week. And just wait, actually. You know. Look, I want to talk about next week. I want to talk about you this stop Saturday. living in the present. You stop thinking about the future. So. You, what's that been said, though? <laughs> oh, we're doing something, yeah. Yes. Uh, so if you're, if you're like an eager beaver and you're listening to this on Friday night or Saturday morning, uh, on let's see saturday the 2nd of april so tomorrow yes if you're listening to this on friday if you're on friday tomorrow saturday the 2nd of april we old dinosaurs are going to step forward into the live streaming platform what's what's that me and tom no we're not taking our clothes off for money we're taking our clothes off for beer that's next season next season so um we're going to be uh doing our beer tasting on saturday night let's say around eight o'clock i'll check twitter or instagram we'll, we'll put exact times and direct links to the youtube live stream for that but this is us finally getting around to reviewing the best of british beer box for march part two yeah, part so, yes. three. The part two. The March two point five will be getting reviewed in April. Yes, I yes. know. We've had a whole month to do it. Lazy bastards. But it's happening. so yes, we'll be live on YouTube for you know an hour or two. Depends how long it takes us to to sample these six beers. So Half yes, an hour probably no one us. Um. <laughs> if, if you can't be arsed with the masked singer on Saturday night. Hop on YouTube <laughs> and talk to us. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah, guys, check that out. Um, it's going to be a blast. Next week, it's going to get real crummy uh, as we somehow managed to convince YouTube superstar the Crummy Beard, a.k.a. Tom 2, to appear on the show. <laughs> And with his help, because I'm all scotted out at this point and gagging for a couple of English brewskis, uh, we take on Northern Monk's Transient and classic Yorkshire Bitter, Stones. A couple from up north, the rival Mandy and Paddy Dingle. Bon voyage, booze hounds. Goodbye. That we dug barking at your end. I was gonna say, can you, <laughs> can you hear that? Just can you hear that? Hold on, just give me a second. I ah, just get some imperial stout on that, Doug. Fascinating, guys. Log log professional. Just get, I can just hear the dog, yeah. I'm trying to podcast in here. Hear the dog over there, yeah. Two dogs. Oh, they're going out. Yeah. Check out the show. Good job.
said they're gonna they said they're gonna check out the show. It's quite I nice did not story. expect a uh, cock fights or sorry, dog fights. There's dog fights outside. So, at yeah. then at your end of the woods. Yeah, there's a little bit of that going on. I didn't. I'm just sad because I didn't actually put a bet on tonight. So they're, they're going ahead. Yeah, that we put on suspicious. Me. Yeah, he's a bit. He's a bit scrappy. Tiny bit. It's all right. I'm just gonna get my BB gun out. Give me a second. <laughs> 